there it was. Um, these guys voted me in. I've been in the job for a whole three days. And, uh, and I immediately issued a letter which went to Mark Lyons that said, Mark, give me your file. Now, standard practice for attorneys, um, if, if I'm handling a client and the client says, oh, well, I don't, I'm not sure about this guy. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I should get a second opinion, like with a doctor, right? You do that. And a good attorney suggests you always get a second opinion, or a doctor, a good doctor, always suggests get a second opinion. You don't, you don't capture clients. Uh, they're free to move, and you should give them informed consent and let them do so. So, um, so you know, Mark left, and the standard practice is you give your file to the new attorney so they can handle the client. I mean, there's no better way to get up to speed than to get the attorney's file because you can see all the notes, you can see all the drafts, you can see the records of the phone calls, you can see... What has this guy been doing? You still have your obligations of confidentiality. You still have all your obligations of protecting the client. So, so I sent the letter to um, Mr. Lyons the next day. That was Tuesday. Yesterday, he wrote to me and he said, I don't, I don't have any original records. Uh, I don't have anything to give you. I'm not holding money in trust. Now, if you have a specific question, I'd be glad to help. And I, I frankly was shocked. I mean, this is unprecedented. I've, I've taken over cases for other attorneys, whether they're in litigation or not. Uh, we did both transactional and litigation for a long time in three states. And the other attorney always gives up their file. Now, a lot of attorneys are cautious and you know that's smart. And so they make a copy of the file before they give it to the other attorney. Then they know what they gave them. They know what they got. They know what they did. Everybody, everybody's on board. And then if there's a question in the file, you then you call the other attorney, the, the former counsel, and you say, counsel, what's up with this? What's up with that? What Mark Lyons offered to do was to be the filter of the information. So if I run into trouble, he'll talk to me. And he'll answer the questions that he thinks I need to know about what's going on at NIC. Now, I've never had an attorney do that to me, ever. I think it's bad practice. Um, in fact, I think it harms NIC because what it does is it puts me in a position of have to figure everything out from ground zero. And then only if I have a question do I go to Mark. And then Mark, who's former counsel now, then gets to say, I wonder what I should give Art so he can protect my former client. Okay, that's just flat out wrong. So, so I objected and you know, in a nice way, he said, well, I'm not going to go digging around for 20 years of records. I'm like, well, no attorney keeps 20 years of, rec 20 years of records. You know, mostly there's the state bar says keep a client's file for five years. And our practice has always been um, you keep the file for five years, then you burn it onto a disk and you call the client and you say, do you want a disk or do you want the paper? If they want the paper, you truck it on out to them with all the maps or whatever it is. If they want the disk, you give them the disk. Okay, this is not this is not rocket science. Mr. Lyons um, has barred me from getting anything out of his office, and so I am of the op opinion now that he is working against NIC, that he does not want to see NIC succeed. Now, maybe he just wants me personally to fail. That could be. I don't know what the, you know. You can't question motivations. All you can do is say what happened. So here's the fact. I asked for the file. I got talked to the hand. So now I'm in a problem because I need to address things that are going on at NIC. There's accreditation matters coming up and, uh, and I don't have a file to work off of. So now I have to start at ground zero. Um, so based on that, um, you know, I, I looked at what's been alleged to have been happening at NIC. And, and what, I, what I've heard so far is a lot of allegations. This person, this, this person, that. You know, if you're one of the friends of NIC, you have a whole narrative going. If you're supposedly from the other side of the aisle, then you're supposed to have another whole narrative going. 
hey, this is, this is baloney. This is not helping our community. So I'm against all that. And what I realized was there's a need for me to investigate certain things that have gone on. And so um, because Mr. Lyons won't give me his file and because he's just kind of leaving me and frankly the school more than me out dry, um, I am going to recommend to the board that because some of these allegations that have arisen are along the lines that Ms. Zimmerman, Trustee Zimmerman was concerned about, that there were open meeting violations, uh, specifically having to do with uh, the hiring of our President Swain. Now, I don't know about that. I can't find out those facts until I investigate. What I did read in the minutes was that um, secondarily, I think it was maybe October, there was a correction to the contract classified as a Scrivener's error. If you don't know what a Scrivener's error is, this would be a Scrivener, and I would be the Scrivener if I'm Scrivenering. And if I, if I make a mistake, like I spell somebody's name wrong, or I get the PO box or the address wrong or something like that, you can go back and correct it. That's a Scrivener's error. But when, when material terms in the contract is, are changed, that's not really a Scrivener's error. That's genuinely a material change was made and it's like hiding under, it's, it's like what Justice Scalia said about regulations. Congress doesn't hide elephants in mouse holes and you don't hide a material change to a contract inside a Scrivener's error. So um, I need to investigate this. I'm getting no help from Mr. Lyons, but um, I don't know if any of you have played chess before. Um, but if you have, you're probably familiar with something called castling. Who's, who's familiar with counts, castling? Anybody? Okay, so five or six or eight. Okay, so this is a move where your king is in trouble or alleged to be in trouble, and you have to do something to defend him or her. And so you castle, and you put, you put the castle in front of the king, and you take over the territory so that you can protect your king while you're doing your, your um, defensive moves or your attack. So I need to investigate. I want to protect our president. So I am going to recommend to the board, based on everything I just said, that the board uh, puts Dr. Swain on administrative leave and then I can do the investigations and he will be protected. It's at full pay. It's not as if we don't expect him to ever take a vacation. Maybe it'll be like a, a vacation. But my point is that once I get the investigation done, then I can report back to the board what I find. My only concern is that in the meantime, college operations might be stymied. So I don't know what the board wants to do about that. But my recommendation is to castle our president, put him on administrative leave while I do my investigation, then our president can have clean hands and say, no, I didn't impede, I didn't have anything to do with it. Um, and then I can do my investigation, then I can get back to the board. Because remember, <laughs> this accreditation thing is coming up in March. And so my personal view, if you remember my editorial was, you know, the, the NIC website even said, are we going to lose accreditation? And the website said, no, not likely. Well, and then we had an election campaign where all we heard from the so-called friend of NIC was that accreditation is on the docket and all your children are not going to go to school and federal aid will stop and all these bad things are going to happen. And I was like, wow, well, that's one way to scare the community. But we don't operate an educational institution by causing fear. Uh, 